working on uh, this. This will be put up on a YouTube channel. So there's some PDP notes, just read it. They, uh, by the way, there is no photography today. Lah. Okay, so continue on. I just do a brief introduction of myself. Since some of you, are, this is the first time that you're hearing me. My name is Chen Kok. So I'm an associate financial advisor. Uh, I have a double major in NTU, in mathematics and economics. I'm a trainer of multiple investment programs. And I'm the founder of Wealth Dojo. My passion in life is really to help people succeed in their financial journey. So along the way, I uh, co-authored a book called Secrets of Value Investing, a co-founder of Journey with Money, a blog in a financial blog in Singapore, a co-founder of Come Investing Private Limited, and a property investor as well. But today, I'm not the main. Uh, I'm not the main speaker. Actually, what I want is I want to help my clients to achieve the financial freedom that they want. And along the way, I realized that some things I uh, I do not have the expertise in. So I wrote in different people ranging from chiropractor, ranging from TCN specialist. And today I got you guys a career coach. Okay, so that you can succeed in your financial journey together. Okay, so I want you to uh, I want to introduce Trevor. Trevor is my dear friend. So he's a career coach, and I met him for uh, I think I know him for what six to seven years already. It's an amazing person with a lot of energy. Every time I speak to him, I don't know whether how many batteries he has at the, at the back of his back. Because he can just keep going on and on, so high energy. Yeah. So uh, he's a career coach and I've seen him actually change the lives of many people around me. Got better jobs, get better offers, increase their money, salary and so on. Um, and that's something I love him about. So both, uh, both of us, we are value investors. We really believe in uh, investing the correct way. There are many other ways that whereby you can do speculation and whatnot, but we really believe in investing uh, a very the proper way. He's also a founder of this club called the One Dollar Investment Club, and previously he's also from other recruitment agencies and has recruited talents for clients like Standard Chartered, Bank of China, and companies like Alibaba and Lazada. Okay, currently he's working in the tech company, and so I really want you to uh, put all your attention today. He has put in good content. A good, uh, a, a lot of good work preparation into this. So everybody, if you can just help me, just type clap in the Zoom group chat or on Facebook, wherever you're on, and let's welcome Trevon Ting. Uh, uh, Trevon, over to you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Can you hear me clearly? All right. First of all, really thanks everyone for waking up so early and also special thanks to Chenko for inviting me to today's session because it's actually my honor to have received the invitation from Chenko because look at his background, right? He has co-founded many companies and also a very solid investor. Seriously, I know him since I what, four, five, no, six years ago, right? Easily, easily. So I've seen him uh, grown so much in his investing portfolio, in his uh, clientele, etc. And uh, he founded many, uh, including our co ordered a book, etc. So uh, it's my honor to be with you today on this uh, morning of a long weekend, right? Saturday morning. And I'll be definitely sharing with you a lot of very, very insightful uh, information, especially from a past experience and how all this can actually help you in your career, okay? So let me just do a quick presentation on my slides. I mean, not a quick one. It's actually a lot of materials, information, and indeed, I've used to conduct like workshops for hours and a few days workshops. So this is the first time I need to compress all in an hour time. So of course, the title today is actually on the five steps for you to increase your uh, employability before the probability of retrenchment. No one likes to be retrenched. No one likes the word retrenchment. So I'm going to share with you how you should improve your employability before that even happens. All right. <coughs> So I have some cough today, I hope you don't mind, uh, and it wouldn't infect you in any way, so not to worry. Uh, I woke up this morning feeling a bit of like uh, having some cough, but that's all right. I would love to still continue, all right? So who is this for, all right? Many of you came from different backgrounds. So I'm sure that many of you are also currently employed, but there could be some of you who are looking to be employed, which means you are currently unemployed. Or it could be also the case that unfortunately, you just got retrenched, really unfortunately, but it may happen during this period, it's okay. Uh, or if you don't want to be retrenched, so this uh, webinar is also very suitable for you. However, if you are currently employed but you do see the possibility of being retrenched, this information I'm going to share with you also will be very insightful. But more importantly, the more if you don't see any possibility of or any retrenchment for you, the more you need to pay attention to because just like what happened in the previous recession, a lot of people got retrenched but they never think they will be retrenched, right? So, that's why we have to be careful. We are taking preemptive uh, pre steps 
to increase our employee DP first, all right? I need to make a bold promise to you. Since you wake up so early for me, I'll be sharing with you that um, actionable steps that you can significantly increase your employability just by the end of this one hour. And I'll be answering you um, some specific questions you have at the end of these sessions, all right? So only if you stay to the end, I'll give you an optional but irresistible offer, and which is something new that I've actually done, but it's compiled of my previous uh, past five, six years of work experience. And uh, allow me to introduce my background quickly so that you know who am I before I share with you the contents, right? So interestingly, I graduated from NUS and with a Bachelor of Project Facilities Management project facilities management. That is like for building construction industry. I don't foresee myself to be in the recruitment industry at all. Until one day, I actually, uh, you know, tried to look for sales job because I like to interact with people and I chanced upon a job title called recruitment consultant. I thought that's interesting. What, what that really is, right? So I applied for it and throughout the interviews, it's when I actually discovered more about the job nature itself and from there, I learned a lot. Then I thought, why not give it a try? So I joined on a job itself and learn more about the whole recruitment practices, recruitment processes and that really helped me a lot for my uh, subsequent years of my career and I think this is going to be very important for you because as a graduate back then like you learn so much about getting your first job from your university, there might be like career center uh, but no one really tells you about how to get promoted, how to get your next job, how to get a better pay, how to increase your uh, employability, right? Nobody tells you that there is a chance to be retrenched no matter how skillful you are, even if you are a first class owner, there's still a chance that you got uh, retrenched, especially if you are in the PMETs group, right? The more income you have, maybe there's a better chance you might got retrenched. Nobody knows, right? So besides that, I was also the um, awardee of National Youth Achievement Award, NYAA Gold Award, like back in 20. Eight also it's really long years back. So uh, this is my honor. It's a um, very memorable moment of mine to have received the honor from former president of uh, Singapore, Tony Tan. So uh, throughout my years of experience, I've also recruited uh, for my client like Alibaba uh, in my previous role, and also currently I'm actually on a contract with a uh, uh, third party that's recruiting for Google software engineers for them. But I need to make a disclaimer here, all right? Um, all I'm going to share with you does not represent the company that I work for. I hope you are you can understand this. And I know we have a lot of people today, uh, but also please keep all this information just for yourself, for your personal growth. Do not really uh, share it out too openly because this is going to be some sensitive information, right? Um, okay, this is also my LinkedIn profile. If you'd like to connect with me, feel free to check it out. And these are my previous uh, testimony I've received from my candidates, like I've placed them into uh, companies like Google, et cetera. So I think what differentiates me, as they say, is sometimes I would love to be more than just a recruitment consultant, but also like a career coach to help you uh, in your whole career planning, not just for your next job. Okay, so these are some of the things that I love to do also on the media, I was on Yes Naturally radio station years ago, and recently, this is like two years ago, I was uh, invited to speak on the, this episode of uh, Top 10 Singapore in English. Uh, and the topic of this episode is actually on career, like career focus, like what's the dream job. So I actually shared my view on how anyone can actually uh, you know, get a dream job. So I want to share with you just a quick video here for you to understand some quick contents. I'll highlight to you the key points. All right. So I think this part you can skip. Just give me a second. Um, let me just move to the. Okay, I think. Yeah, I just want to go to. All right, this is a very interesting topic and this is like the highlight of the whole hour of session, right? So that's the conclusion. So, yeah, let me just move on.
Yeah, so one thing I would like to make it clear is that it is one point about uh, getting high employability, but it's another thing to really focus on building employability for the things that you love doing. No point that if you are an engineer or something, you hate doing it, and no point to be the most uh, higher uh, employability person in that field, but you don't enjoy doing it, so that's no point. And uh, of course, later on, I would love to hear from you. I know we have like 20 plus people right now on this call. I will get some information about yourself, like what's your industry and how many years of work experience you have in a short while. All right, stay tuned. But before that, I would like to also ask you some like a fun quiz questions for people who may already know me or who may not know me. These are some fun facts that you may want to give a try. Right, later I will need your participation. Like, here's a question. Which job have I not worked before? What do you think? A, banquet server at five-star hotels or flower boy on Valentine's Day. Basically, um, selling like flowers on Valentine's Day, right? And the third option, I was a street poller. Street poller is like street surveyor. So basically on the street, asking people what's their opinion on different events, etc. Um, yeah, so that's like a freelance job. And actor. So which one do you think I have not worked with before? Can you actually time in a chat session? Just make a random guess. All these are random part-time freelance job I had uh, back in university days. But which one have I actually not worked before? Let me see some interesting uh, guesses here. All right. Let me see the chats. Where, where is the chat function? Um, let me see. Let me see. Come on. C. D. All right. Actor. Actor. That, that's true. <laughs> I think most of you got it right. So I, I appear on TV as a, a speaker, uh, a guest speaker, but not really as actor. So I think, yeah, I've done like ABC. Uh, that's pretty interesting experience that I had. Another question, just a quick one. This is also pretty fun. And we all faced rejection before, right? I'm sure you have applied to many companies. Maybe there's a few who, who is lucky to get a dream job at the first application, but most people would have been rejected by various companies in, in throughout their career, right? So let me just share with you openly. What are the companies that have rejected my application before? All right, this is interesting. The first one, Changi Airport Group. Second one, Singapore Airlines. Third one, LinkedIn. Fourth one, Airbnb. Which one do you think they have rejected my job application before? Make a guess. <coughs> All right. Singapore Airlines, Singapore Airlines, Singapore Airlines, B, B, B. That's obvious. Let me, let me show you some context. So what job I actually applied for with a Singapore Airlines. It's to be a cabin crew. I think that's a reason why it's pretty easy to guess, right? Yeah, maybe it's my height, but not really. Um, because I actually passed the criteria of the minimum height requirements. So maybe it's my look then. <laughs> all right, so in fact, the answer for this question is actually A, B, C, D. I've been rejected for all these four companies before, uh, but also for different roles. Um, yeah, so Changi Airport Group was like my first job after graduation. I applied to like a facility management or management associate program with them. Got rejected. LinkedIn was for another role. It's not a recruiter role that I was like, Give it a try and I would love to join the company also. And also got rejected. Uh, I think the rule is not exactly a match. And then Airbnb is like years ago, I give it a try also. Like I want to join in-house, right? Previously, I was a recruitment consultant with uh, um, like agencies. I wanted to join in-house. So I applied to like Airbnb. So uh, sometimes you got rejected. It might be actually a good thing. Right now, they are also uh, having a tough time. And I think they are also having like, a lot of retrenchment ongoing. So it's also a good thing sometimes where that you got rejected rejected for whichever reasons, right? So I didn't, for Shirley question, I didn't join Airbnb in the end. So I didn't join all these four. All right, so now it's a moment I want to understand yourself before I can share relevant information, right? I would actually try to share my information that's relevant to you. So I need to understand a bit of your background. Tell me two things, right? First, what industry you are from and how many years of experience? Oh, sorry, can I move the green screen, uh, gray screen in the middle? Just in a second. Let me just try to hide myself like I don't see myself now. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so tell me two things. Sorry, green thing. Okay, green screen. What industry you are in and how many years of experience you have? I think I'm going to see the chat. So um, yeah, I don't know. Let me just move this around so that I can still see the chats coming in. All right. Can I still see? Yeah. So tell me what industry you are in and how many years of work experience you have so that I have a good idea of what like uh, what seniority you are in and what industry, right? Uh, because the whole idea of like career planning, it can be quite different if you are a fresh graduate, if you are a PMET with five, 10 years plus of work experience, or if you are a senior like a, with 
20, 20 plus years of work experience, the whole approach can be really quite different. All right, can I see some comment? Okay, drugs development research, pretty cool. 10 years, interesting. All right, Any, anyone else? Technology sector, nice, join us. 18 years, all right, this is the right sector to be in, definitely. And um, anyone else? Okay, okay, keep me coming. I'll just move on for now, and let's move on. So, I will try to hide the gray box, okay. So, life of a recruitment consultant, a lot of people may not know how recruitment consultant makes money. Recently, I actually um, came across a message from my friend that, hey, um, I was approached by a recruitment consultant, but I I'm not sure if I should actually like, you know, respond to the person because they seems to be like, you know, scamming people or I don't know. I don't know how my friend got that, that express, uh, impression, but it's actually not true. A uh, recruitment consultant usually makes money from the commission, yes, of every placement. Yes, they will make money out from you, but it's not paid by you. It's paid by the client. Let's say if you are joining this company A, the company A will actually pay the recruitment agency uh, some of fee and it will not be actually affecting your salary at all. all right? In fact, I want to share with you one key point. This is um, pretty insightful. The more you get, the more the recruitment consultant will get it. So the higher the salary uh, you are getting, the higher the uh, recruitment consultant, the higher the commission the recruitment consultant will be getting as well. So it's actually pretty aligned. And this is one good reason you want to work with recruitment consultant and they can share you some market information and they will be a lot more willing to work with you rather than let's say an uh, in-house HR. They have so many candidates, they're so busy, they will not have too much time to entertain you. Um, so if you're working with a consultant, however, the person will likely to have worked with different clients in the same industry. They will know a very good picture on the ground and the industry. So I will encourage you to actually work with a recruitment consultant. This is one uh, advice for you. All right. So let me jump straight into the next part, which is a key point of today's slide, right? So before I show you the five steps, I have actually laid out in a framework. I would like to point to you a fact that a lot of people try to avoid it, but this is a fact that has been appearing on a newspaper in the last few weeks, which is this. Retrenchments and withdrawal job offers. Singapore labor market shows signs of COVID-19 strain, and you can see it's from this um, Chinese News Asia, published only a month ago, 23rd of April. All right, this is what the Ministry of Manpower has to say. The number of retrenchments is expected to continue rising in the coming months. We are only the start of this recession. Um, they have not formally declared yet. We need two um, quarters to have shown like uh, continuous uh, decline of the uh, growth. So, but it's very true that we are in a recession and the number of retrenchments is expected to rise. Hence, hence, the importance for you to know how to increase your employability. All right. But what does employability mean to you? Let me hear some. Noise, not really noise, but um, sorry. Let me hear your your view. What does employability means to you? Can you see? Yep, yep, yep. Can I see some of the chats coming? Okay. Okay. So, what does employability means to you? Have you even heard of this term? Because this could be new to quite a number of you. Um, yeah. Got job, got income. Yep, so how you are right? Okay, okay. That, that's more than that. What else? Good job, good income. All right, so let me move on. So um, the whole point from the Google search will tell you that employability refers to the attributes of a person that makes the person able to gain and maintain the employment. All right, in other words, it is how, I mean, I'll, I'll try to uh, translate this definition, right? It's actually how this person is able to make himself or herself suitable for the market needs and make himself or herself sustainable in terms of employment, all right? So your courses are just part of the success formula because you could be a best software engineer out there, you could be a best accountant out there, but you need to have additional skills such as maybe resume writing, interview skills, all that additional skills to help you to be more employable. employable. Uh, because you were, you were definitely able to resonate with me that some of the cases whereby your colleagues, your peers that you have heard, they have uh, actually may not be as good as you, but they got promotion first and they get more salary. So the job market is unfair, right? Yeah, just like stocks market, right? You can actually gain the unfair advantage only if you actually take the necessary steps. And that's the whole reason why I'm sharing with you the uh, steps to actually increase your unbearability. All right, um, come share with me what do you think first. What, what do you think are the 
um, steps that you need to increase your availability. Any any guesses? All right. Before 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 I share, Bill, come. Any any guesses? What do you think are the steps? Okay. Living life passionately. All right. That that's for sure, man. That's the number one thing, right? Maybe. What else? What else? What are the steps to take to increase availability? Building a network. That's definitely part of the uh, whole game plan, which I would include later. Yep. Thanks, Natalius. Um. But before that, most people actually miss out a few things. Upgrade their skills to the super level. Yep, this is absolutely true. Uh, one thing that quite a number of my friends, I realized they miss out one thing. Continuous training and learning, that's for sure. That is actually at a later stage. So what I personally think from my past experience, I have spoke to thousands of like candidates. I've reviewed thousands of resumes, etc. I've talked to a pretty good number of like clients from the industry. And a lot of people may not realize what have actually changed. So the first thing is actually to assess your external environment first. Ask yourself what changes, right? As of now, we are literally in a new world, the new normal. And that's why you see, we are not even hold, hosting a physical workshop, but through a virtual webinar like this, which you can't really imagine this format maybe one year ago, two years ago, even a few months ago. But this is a basic skill you need to have as well, to pass information, to share your skills over the internet, over a virtual uh, call like this. And even for interview, ask yourself, can you really go to a company to have a physical interview? No, right? You have to pick up skills to actually um, attend interview through virtual interview in a format like this. You need to ensure you have good background, etc., and know how to you uh, you know, still make it very interactive and able to stand out from such a format of interview, right? And what other changes we are seeing right now? Yep, businesses are closed and certain industries are highly impacted. If you are in the airline industry, tourism industries, you, no matter how good you are in the industry, things have changed, all right? If you are only just want to stay in the industry, it's, it's going to be much harder. So you need to, before you upgrade your skills, um, you need to ask what are your external environment looks like to you, right? Uh, no point upgrading your skill to be the best tour guide where there's no tour. No point to be upgrading your skills in what industry, uh, which may no longer exist anymore, all right? We are in a new way. You need to pick up new skills that is relevant. So, for example, companies like Facebook, Twitter are even talking about permanent remote work or work from home. So, these are the things that you have to get used to. It. You need to know some facts before you go into the details like how should I um, build my network because who are you going to network with, right? That is also very important. And the next step is really about assessing yourself also. Sometimes when I, when I share this point, people got excited. Yes, I know what the external environment is like. I know uh, online is a thing. And then, uh, yeah, I will, I, will, I will go and craft a resume. I will actually uh, update my LinkedIn. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I want to apply for jobs. But that, that's another critical, critical step they miss out, right? Which is assessing yourself. Do you really have the skills that it takes to, to apply for the job you want? All right? Do you really um, have all you need to... Go to where you want to be. What are the things that's missing? You need to ask yourself first. If not, then how can you pick things up, right? So first, there's, there's two questions to this uh, step. I don't, in fact, there's much more steps, but I'm actually doing a framework like one, two, three, five. So in this framework of like step two, you need to go into two key questions. The first one, what existing skill set you have, all right? Um, and what are the strengths and weaknesses? These are the basics, but don't stop there, all right? Because no point also knowing like, okay, my strength is this. I am maybe introvert. I, uh, my, my weakness is to speak on the stage. My weakness, I, I can't speak well in front of people. I, I, my weakness is I can't speak in front of a, 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 a laptop, right? I can't see, it's my weakness. Um, yeah, so I need to find a job that is like, doesn't require me to talk to people. And my strength is to paperwork, all right? If that's the case, then you need to face the reality that you will not be paid as much. Because... In the past, like 10, 20 years ago, people are using this as a career coach. Right? They'll tell people like, okay, recognize your strength and weaknesses and try to focus on your strength. And yeah, and then you go for a job that you like and with your strength, but then you will end up in a job that you love doing with your strength, but you are not getting paid well, all right? So you need to strike a good balance between these fields. So there are actually a few steps uh, you need to go further, right? The next key question is about what other skills you need to pick up, all right? It's okay to recognize that your, your weakness is uh, not able to speak that well, uh, not able to feel, face the camera, uh, feeling a bit shy. It's, it's one thing. But the other thing as you have assessed on the step one, but 
That is what the market needs. The market needs people to be able to sell, to share over the virtual internet like this, right? Um, even if you, you are sharing of this, but you need to think, you need to plan it out that this is the skills I need to pick it up. You need to build up new skills for this new world that we are in, all right? Once you have done only with this step one and two, then only we'll go into the step three, which most people actually uh, have shared earlier about the things that we should be doing right now, but that's only when you complete step one and two. So this is the meat of the uh, ingredients in order to increase your availability, right? So to map out your action plans, in fact, there's so many steps in this step three. So, um, but why are most people actually not doing this? Because when you're in good times, yeah, it's fine, right? Everybody gets a job. If you want a job, yeah, just apply for a job, you will get it. There's no issue. There are plenty of jobs out there, but right now, we are in, you see, it's all about supply and demand. So when there are actually more supply of talents, some people got retrenched, right? Then there's, and there's actually less demand of the jobs out there. That's when you need to stand out from the whole game itself. You can't be the previous you. You need to do new things to get yourself stand out and also get a job you want and get high employability. Be the one that people employ, prefer to employ you rather than another person. So this is the key part about increasing your employability skill sets. Yes, yes, I see some comments earlier about updating a resume, updating LinkedIn profile. It's about updating. Is it? Is it all? No, no, hell no. It's not just to update, but to upgrade. We are in a new world. And yeah, update doesn't work. Some people really, they, they think, okay, yeah, I need to look for a job. Ah, oh, yeah, it's been a long time. So I spend the whole weekend or, or I, I try to update my profile. No, it's about upgrading. Don't use the old format or resume. Don't use like how you previously did for your LinkedIn profile. And how, okay, how you get your previous job doesn't guarantee you the way you can get your next job. It's different, all right? Especially some people, like for example, I've seen people with like 10 plus years to experience, 18 years to experience, um, and, and like more. I've seen people with 20 years of experience. Yes, those things work out for the previous time, for 10 plus years ago when you got your first job, second job, next job. But now it's in a new game. So you have to just uh, upgrade about the whole game plan, which is my strength. And I will share with you later about what I mean by that. For example, what I teach people is also about not just updating, but writing an impressive CV. So not just an updated resume, but an impressive one that will make you stand out first. We are talking about, let's say, two person of the same skill set, same experience, but the one with a more impressive uh, experience will actually get invited for an interview and subsequently the person will stand a better chance. And this is all we talk about employability, right? The person have a better employability than you. So. Um, also, you need to be on your online presence and relationships. It's now you can't go out and let's catch up over coffee, right? Which I use uh, to frequently do. Like for example, Natalia is my good friend. I used to, uh, you know, ask him for coffee chats or every like quarter or so. But now we, we can't catch up that often and we can't really meet people, right? Uh, even like for your friend, you can't really meet. So, so for your friends, for your peers, you want to catch up. It's only to online right now. And you need to actually still doing it. Doesn't mean that you are start at home and it's circuit breaker that shouldn't be an excuse for not continuing building the relationship building your online presence and this is a lot more important because people are staying home people are using LinkedIn more social media more and you, this is time you need to build more online presence you should be doing it and uh, the other thing so much things in this set there's another thing is to prepare for interviewers I know you might be thinking yeah I'm not looking for a job yet uh, maybe let's see if only if retrenchment happens then I will like prepare for interviews, right? I haven't, shot, I haven't got shot it up for interview. Why should I prepare for that? But no, because you don't want to force in a situation where, but hey, let's say one day Google give you a call, one day Facebook, LinkedIn give you a call, or, or any of your dream company give you a call. Can you go for interview next week through a virtual uh, webinar, etc.? And you don't want to make your, the interview you need to be the first interview because you will, it's likely that you will be nervous. It's likely that you will be, uh, a lot, not, a lot more not comfortable in, in you know, interviewing through just a screen like this. And you need practice. Only practice will make perfect. Just like right now, I don't think I'm perfect. I don't think I'm like as good as maybe Chenko about how all this webinar is, right? I'm still not as uh, good yet, but I am starting doing it more. This is like my uh, second or third webinar I have been doing in the past one. But I, I think I want to um, do more. Chenko, are you there? I, I want yes, to yes, thank you. I'm there. Because I want oh. to thank you because uh, I was in... 
after the invitation, I actually got inspired. And in fact, I'm planning to do much more uh, interview series as well. So interview people from different backgrounds. So maybe some of you who is in this call, uh, I can see some who commented earlier. Maybe I can pick a few person to uh, also have like some uh, short interview and to feature you, which will help you in, in your maybe next career. And your experience might be also better to help another person who might have someone who has, might, let's say they have lesser years of experience, but they will benefit from your sharing. So uh, through this, it's like a women's situation. So these, these are the new things that we have, we need to do. So thank you, Chanko. For sure, so, remember to interview me, okay? <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. I have known you for like uh, so many years. I want to really understand how is your, uh, what's your secret tricks to really progress, even as a like so-called self-employed person, right? Self-employed professional. So uh, yeah, that's actually much more, but these are the super important things that you should be doing first, okay? Uh, it's not exclusive. There's like much more you need to do. But so what? You have all these things um, without really executing it because you see all these things are the things you need to do, but without putting it a schedule, without really doing it, you aren't seeing uh, results. You aren't seeing progress. So sometimes when people give me uh, a text like, okay, uh, Trayvon, uh, I need some help. Um, can I get advice for you? Yeah, I share them. I share them. Like, yeah, this is what you should be doing. And yeah, but after that, maybe they don't execute at all. So sometimes I don't hear back on what's their progress update. And then maybe if they, they just feel good when I tell them that, oh, they, they feel like, oh, there's hope in life. There's, there are things that there are people I can reach out to. But if they don't execute, they, they can't see results. And this is also when career coaching comes into the picture. It is similar to like getting a personal fitness coach. You, you know what to do now, for example, if this topic is about losing your weight, you know what to do, right? I'll tell you, hey, first, eat right, eat less. Second, exercise more, right? When you eat less, when you exercise more, for sure you will get good results. But the only reason why you aren't seeing results is you're lacking of progress, like executions, and perhaps you're lacking of a coach to guide you, to push you into getting the dreams you want, right? In this case, it's about career development, about improving employability skills. So this is what I realized throughout my years of like, coaching experience. I, you, I started with like, free coaching just to share with you, right? When I, it's just my passion to share with you all the things I know. Um, so when I first started, I was excited to share with people, but I realized something is still missing. And that's when subsequent years in my third year of my career, then that's where I realized what's missing, all right? So I attended like career coaching certification program and that's why I realized, that, oh, this is the secret, man. You need coaching, you need people to push you, to, to guide you through. Uh, it may not be guiding you, like pointing out where to go, but to grow with you, like together. It's more like hand, uh, hand, like holding your hands through this journey. When you say you want to do all the step trees all here, but are you doing it? And for sure also, you will be facing like challenges, right? You will definitely face challenges. If you don't, you need to assess, like do the step one and step two. You need to reassess, are you actually uh, setting goals that is actually uh, a bit far stretched rather than just staying with your comfort zone? Only when you stretch your goals, you'll definitely face challenges and that's a no, right? So a career coach is then to uh, point you to a blind spot. I'm not asking you right now like to get me as a career coach. My time is also limited. I can't help like 20 plus of you right away. But this is the piece that you can also get your friends, your family, your brother, sister, your good friend, or your peers, your colleagues, whoever, to be your coach, to be an accountability coach at least. They may not have the expertise, but they can at least be your accountability coach. Uh, if you're a good client of like, I mean, uh, uh, if you're a good friend of like, let's say, Chenko, if he's free, if he's willing, he can be your coach as well, right? Uh, but this is very important to, to make sure that you execute the plans that you work out for in step three. But is that all? Seems like I'm done, right? Seems like, yeah, one, two, three, four should be good. Are, are we good with like, uh, have I increased your ability skills so far? Not, not, not yet, right? Uh, not yet, not yet, not yet. That's one final thing that I think, um, yeah, I see messages coming. Cool, cool, cool. Nice, nice. I'll, re I'll respond to our questions later. Um, okay, let me just let me just continue with the final steps first because I think if I open the group chat, some of you might see a grief box maybe. I don't know what causes that problem, but let me just continue first, then I will check the QA later. Okay, let me see how much time I have here. Yeah, I got some time there. <coughs> okay, next step. Let's move on. All right, the next step is about getting feedback and review. If you think, okay, yeah, Trayvon straight about one, two, three, four, four, and I do all this five, I should be good. I should be better than most of my peers. Uh, is it good? Not really, not really. Because you see, this is the same formula, the same ingredients, the same stats you need. But if you approach it differently, you will do different results because this is the traditional method. Most people will think one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E. But the reality is about getting feedback and review. This is how it should work. It's endless loop, right? 
because um, let's say if you are if you are a junior uh, person in your job and you did all the things and you got a next job already, but that's not the end game, right? Uh, I'm assuming most of you are not retiring anytime soon, so you will still need to do this and throughout your whole career, a research have done, I can't recall which paper, a research has shown, you will need to face at least maybe five, ten times about this process, like updating or upgrading a resume, LinkedIn, building connections, getting a job, next increment of salary. Um, go on other days whereby you get a good job and you, and you stay for 10 years or 10 years. And I'm going to share with you some very personal uh, experience sharing also. Loyalty doesn't pay, all right? Don't screenshot this part. <laughs> Loyalty doesn't pay. I've seen people who have, who have been so loyal to stay in their jobs because they love it. Good team members, good job. They stay for five, 10 years. Their pay is not so good. Of course, of course there are exceptional cases whereby I know a few of a friend of mine, they do still did something like uh, getting job promotion. Uh, that's also a different strategy you need. But if you're staying your job for too long with no promotion, likely that your salary or that your career uh, growth would not be as much. I mean, right now, the current market, uh, employers were a lot more interest, are a lot more interested in getting people with different backgrounds, a lot more uh, adapt adaptable to the market, a lot more diversified portfolio. Uh, the experience should be also more regional, more, you see, we can do, uh, I can be getting coaching clients from, let's say, Australia, New Zealand, from different parts of the world, from Taiwan, Hong Kong, right? So you need to get your international market out there, regardless of what job, what your background industry is as well. So uh, yeah, this is important. This should be a loop. So we should need to get feedback and review because some of the strategies that you have used in, let's say, step three, if it's not good, change it, update and upgrade and basically modify it. Make sure that this is a loop process, okay? So I believe this is all the keepers I need to share in my limited time. Oh my God, this is like, whoa. I, I want to spend more time with like answering questions rather than just um, sharing all my contents for my slides. So, um, but let me know. So far, I have yet to read the questions here, but so far, so far, have you learned something from the five steps? Have you, do you think these are helpful framework for you in terms of my five steps? Can you just tell me, is it good? Give me a thumbs up or give me a good. Is it good content so far? All right, so that I'm not like feeling lonely, right? Give me some response. If I'm in the classroom, I'll, I'll say, hey, man, high five. How do you think? Share me what do you think. It's good. It's good. Serene, thank you. Good. I see a thumbs up from Philip. Thank you so much. Anyone else? I know we have more people here. Don't fall asleep, right? I know it's morning. I know you woke up so early for me. Uh, you can grab a coffee if you need to or if you already had. Yeah, Eileen, Eileen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. All right. I hope it has been helpful. Let me check through some responses. Um, or, or Chenki, if you don't mind, can you point to me some questions that I need to answer? Sure. Uh, actually, they wake up for me, lah. But anyway. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, so sorry. Oh, yeah. For us, lah. Come on. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. For us, for us. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. So, uh, I wrote down a few questions, and um, I I think these are very interesting questions that perhaps you can help these participants. Okay. So, okay. um, thanks for the great talk, ah. So, uh, and I know this is not the end. This is just the start because now is where all the Q and A starts flooding in. So, uh, be prepared, ah, Trevor. <laughs> so, oh, first sure, question sure. is this. Uh, I like this question a lot. It's from Kelvin Hui. So Kelvin is from on Facebook and uh, he's attending our Facebook live. La. So nice, his nice. question is this. Um, employers... Uh, so, wait, he's, I wrote it down somewhere. Okay. Uh, universities are moving towards video lectures. Uh, video lectures. Would this degrade the value of degrees in future? Therefore, the employability of future graduates. Okay. So uh, I'll repeat the question again. Yep. Uh, this probably is for people who are just new in the industry or just about to graduate. So universities okay. are moving towards online lectures. Will this okay. degrade or devalue the value of this degree and hence the employability of this degree? Uh, maybe you have some comments on that? Sure, very good question. But my, my point in fact is not about going online because the harsh truth is in fact your degree already doesn't as much, right? Your degree doesn't matter as much. Do I have a first class? No. Do I even have a second upper? I don't think so. I can't recall even. Right? Your degree doesn't matter. I'm in my recruitment job. I'm doing career coaching, which is not irrelevant to like project and facilities management, right? Like going online of these lectures doesn't really degrade. What really degrades uh, the value of your degree? I mean, it, it's not, I mean, in terms of employability, it's not the degree that matters. It's really about how you are able to shine in the market and people buy your experience 
you can see on the news, I think this is not a secret, uh, Google, a few other companies have actually publicly mentioned degree is not a key criteria anymore. Even I think in government sector, Singapore government also mentioned that they are not just looking at a degree holders as a minimum requirement. So what's more about going online or not? And you are not alone. I believe the university that you are attending or you have attended right now, it's not the only university that's like going virtual. So it's everyone. So it's like the same currency we are holding. If this is like currency, right? So if the currency is dropping, like everyone is the same. So you are, you are not any different with this impact. Have I answered your question? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I'll wait for yeah, him so to basically, reply. Basically, hmm. basically uh, it, it, it's not a key point, all right? And everyone will be going through this as well. And I would say this is even better for you if, if you want my spe more specific answer because you have gone through the virtual uh, format of lecture. You can now, you have trained to be able to focus on a few hours of lecture in front of a laptop, right? That's a great skill you need to have, right? You need to, to still feel excited in front of the laptop where you can't see anyone else. Right, this is a skill you need. You need to absorb information from the lecture, which is virtual. Then you need to also uh, share your values, share your skills through a virtual format. So I, I will only think this is actually a better way and that saves you time, that saves you a lot more. I believe the university fee might also go down because they save on the uh, lecture halls, etc. Save on electricity. So this should be a good thing and it's only natural that even before this crisis, so many courses are already going on like Harvard or Oxford, they are already offering many, many online courses, all right? Online courses okay. is the way to go, I think so. So it's, it's a good thing. That's my okay. short answer, all right? Cool, cool. Uh, the, the second question is from <coughs> Anonymous. So uh, okay. this, this guy actually was at me and then say, don't, uh, don't want to tell the name last time. Okay, I respect okay, that. Okay. Yeah, so- That's uh, a good question. I like, I like, I like. Yeah, I, I like this question a lot. So in step number three, <coughs> map up your action plan, right? So uh, this guy, he actually has an action plan and he's thinking on how to build relationship during this period of time. Okay, so oh. in the past, there were uh, coffee breaks at the pantry area or uh, maybe lunchtime, you can chat with your colleagues and so on. So uh, right now in this, um, or uh, this period of time, right, how uh, would you advise to uh, keep in touch or build relationship with your colleagues or maybe external employers and so on? What was your take? Okay, I totally love this question. You are asking the right question. You see, uh, right question will give you the right answer. I love it because I just did something even last night. Right? This is a long weekend. And what's a holiday on coming Monday? What's a holiday again? Are you right? Are you right? Yeah, yeah. So that is always a good opportunity for you to connect back with your uh, old contacts, peers, ex bosses, etc. So you see, in throughout my uh, five plus years of work experience, I've recruited so many talents into different companies. So what I did earlier, what do you think? On a Friday um, afternoon evening, this is a bit sensitive as well. What I did was to reach out to all my, not all, but most of my ex-candidates that I've actually placed them into. I just give a text, hey, how have you been? It's been, you know, it's been a few years or a long time since the last chat. Uh, yeah, happy Hari Raya to happy long weekend if you are not really like Muslim. Uh, happy long weekend. And this is how you build connection. People will remember you, okay, wow, you are not reaching the person for any, anything else, but really to build connection, really to just stay in touch. Hey, how have you been? Of course, frankly speaking, you will not receive all good responses. People may be just, okay, good, yep, yeah, okay, not too much. That's also not bad, but the greater one would be, I have one candidate who responded to me like, yeah, time and flies. Back then, I was having my first child. Now, oh, a second baby is here. Oh, let's see, this is his cute photo. Like, yeah, how are things with you then? This is how you build connections. And I didn't know the person actually left the job. I placed the, my candidate into um, Alibaba uh, about two years back. After that, he actually moved on. Yeah, in less than two years, close to two years. He left to actually join another company that's a lot more high growth potential because Alibaba is quite established. So uh, he is actually building up a new company that's like the, in the online space itself. So I see a lot of high growth opportunity and who knows, they might eventually go IPO also. So these are the things I'm also learning. So this is how you build connections and you still stay in touch with the industry you are in, right? I think this is the best time to build and save you time. You save money on coffee. I, I asked Chenko also, how are you doing with your online? Uh, how do you meet your clients, right? Save you coffee time. Of course, you can't chat as in-depth or, or over a virtual call. You will get more into the point, but it's either through virtual call like this or um, just through Texas, especially like long weekend or, or um, you know, uh, like festival, you're just sending some greetings. Uh, that would definitely be great. Just stay in touch. People remember you. Even if they don't respond to you, they'll remember you. Hey, this guy, okay. Yeah, I met him a few weeks back. He just messaged me. I don't know for what reason, but it's okay. Yeah. Then they'll remember you as a person. My Xbox, my first box back in what? Five years ago. 
just texted me last night for no reason. I don't know why. I think he, he messaged me further. I didn't respond yet, but it's okay. Yeah, I think it's something. How has it been? Are you in Singapore still? Are you in C company? This is how you stay in touch. And I want to share more on this point because like even for coming Monday, it's a long weekend, but I, I'm, I don't stop working. It, it's not really working. I don't stop building connections. And I'm actually connecting my friend, uh, a good friend of mine on Monday as well for a chat to understand how he's doing. And he's connecting with me, another good colleague of him. So we are in a conference call, like three of us will be just having a chat. So this is how you continue to build connections, right? And you help people to connect people as well. So this is, yeah, this is the best time. Have I answered your question? I think I'm giving maybe more than uh, what you need actually. This is the best time to build connections and you should do more often than, than previous. Okay, cool, cool. Then, uh, so <laughs> I, I'm hearing a lot of uh, texting, uh, a lot of uh, setting up the appointments and so on. So uh, actually he, there's a follow-up question is, when will be the best time to uh, kind of like keep in touch? Let's say uh, today, or uh, maybe uh, Saturday uh, or weekday, weekends, which, what is the best timing now that we are in this uh, circuit breaker? When's the best time to really send a text, uh, keep in touch and so what was your point of view? Great, great, great. So this is, I think this is like continuation of the previous question. Yep, yep. Um, mm. So, and there's reason why I specifically choose yesterday. All right. Just like, just like even as a recruitment consultant, we are trained to reach out on, to people on a separate, different days as well. So Friday is the best time to build connections and to do like co coding So people are more relaxed. I know work from home and holiday doesn't really make a difference. You're all at home anyway, but people psychologically, you still feel different. It's a long weekend still. It's like another three days free from work, take a break. And they'll feel, naturally, they feel more looking forward. And Friday, Anytime is actually good. But if you want to be more specific, I'm happy to share with you. This is like detailed sharing and usually I only share in a detailed coaching call, but it's okay for, for a chain code session. I want to share everything I know. And yeah, so the best time is actually around between 4 to 6 p.m. So usually, ideally, it should be still there at work because if it's after 6 p.m., hey, people are spending time with a family. Don't disturb their family time, right? And after 6, they might be traveling home. If they're already at home, they're preparing for dinner or spending time with uh, children and they might already have some family time like watching movie together at 8 p.m., 9 p.m., etc. So, don't disturb their family time, right? But the best time is between even like four to six or around three to six is fine because that's, they are still working, but they don't really work at their hours already, right? That the mood is like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just like closing off like my stuff. I'm just finishing stuff. I'm just clearing stuff. So that's the best time to stay connections. And yeah, and when they are in a good feeling, they remember you for good things. Don't reach out to people on Monday, ideally, right? Monday is the day whereby they open their laptop, so many emails, walaway. Well, well, who is this guy still emailing me some more? Well, oh, I, I got no time to respond to you. And sometimes it's not, they don't want to respond to you, but you are in for a wrong time. Monday is not a good time to reach out to uh, people to stay connected unless you have some urgent meetings. Monday, give them, right? So uh, yeah, the best time is during this period and the timing is Friday 4 to 6, ideally. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. By the way, by the way, Friday, Friday is over. So today is Saturday, so it's still okay. Uh, yeah, don't think your chance is over, right? So uh, holiday is on Monday. I mean, yeah, probably holiday. So you can still send a greeting on an even Sunday afternoon. Uh, a greeting? Why not? Okay, cool. Then thanks for the answer. I hope that answers your question, uh, the anonymous. Uh, anonymous. Okay, so uh, back to me again. So uh, thanks very much, Tikpo, for sharing. I think it's, it's okay. It's not easy for me to get Tikpo to really come here and uh, really share with you all this information. He has spent the last seven years of my life, at least uh, when I know him, right? helping people to really achieve their career goals and so on. So that's why it was not easy for, he could really spend his, you know, Saturday morning, today's weather is so good. We could really just go have a nice breakfast, have a good coffee, but he really chose to spend his time to help you guys. And I, I really want to bring this to, uh, bring him to all of you. Lah. So uh, thanks Trevon for, for that. Really, really thank you for the great information. And I believe our participants really benefited a lot from this. Okay, so you uh, with, you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching till the end. As promised, I'm going to share with you the irresistible offer that I have, all right, which is my online course on seven steps to crafting impressive CV, which is also a secret of how I landed my dream job at one of the big tech giants, all right. I'm going to show you quite detailed information and please go to this website, bit.ly slash discount321. Why is it that? Why is it discount321? Because I'm giving you a special discount of $321 off from the original price. And there's a special offer to you, all right? So let me share with you uh, what is actually contains in this course. Um, I share with you, of course, why you need an impressive CV and what questions to ask even before you start writing an impressive CV or a CV of yourself. And uh, what you should be covering like a photo and how do you actually craft a professional branding for yourself. And what do I mean by concise personal information which you should include in your resume and how do you write a profile 
salmon that is really outstanding, not just like any other generic objective salmon, etc. And how do you write your uh, achievement statements, etc. There's even a secret weapon which I'm actually using to make your resume able to stand out among all the peers and among all other applications, right? So you definitely want to uh, learn this before before you know applying to any other jobs that you want to uh, apply to. So there's a special bonus, which is this. You're going to email me, I want a bonus resume review session, which I'll be sharing with you uh, personalized feedback on your resume so that you can actually uh, apply what you have learned. And this bonus is only if you actually email me this title and to my email address to claim this bonus, right? And this is a special deal because you have watched my webinar till the end and I will see you on the other side. Thank you.